My name is Larry Guger. I'm with the Visual Studio team. Today I want to talk to you about the Microsoft Monitoring Agent. This is a new agent that we've introduced that works in both a standalone mode and with System Center 2012 R2. This agent works to monitor web applications hosted in Internet Inter Information Services. And today I'm going to focus on the standalone scenario. Using the standalone scenario, the data that's collected with the Microsoft Monitoring Agent can be analyzed in Visual Studio 2013 Ultimate using the IntelliTrace feature. We're going to look at that as well as how Team Foundation Server 2013 includes additional data that you can use to get back to the matching source code that was used to build your application. So this is the Microsoft Monitoring Agent download site. You can see it's hosted in the Microsoft Download Center. It's a very simple product to use. All you have to do is go to this site using your favorite search engine click the download button and you'll see the options that are available. You can download either x86 or a 64-bit. I'll show the 64-bit. Once I've selected it, you'll get this pop-up asking you to either save or run the agent. I'm just going to run it directly from here. This is a fairly small install, so it happens fairly quickly and once you've downloaded it, you can copy it onto multiple different servers to install at your leisure. Okay. Now that it's downloaded, you can see I get the startup screen. I'm just going to click Next, accept the license agreement, choose my install location, and here you can see I have an option of either keeping it in just standalone mode, or I can connect it to an existing system center. Since I'm not using system center, I'm going to disable that option. I can click Next, confirm my settings, and then do the install. Once I've installed the Microsoft Monitoring Agent, all of my interaction with it in standalone mode can be done with PowerShell. I can choose to use the Start command using Start Web Application Monitoring. And from here, I provide the name of the website that I want to monitor, Fabricam Fiber, the mode, and I can choose from Monitoring or Trace Mode, and we're going to show you what it looks like in Monitoring Mode in this demo. And where do I want to drop the log files that get collected? Now, I've already started my monitoring, so I'm just going to escape out of this. And what I'm going to show you now is I'm going to show you how we can look at a website that is already being monitored. So I'm going to check to see which websites are being monitored. This is done with the Get Web Application Monitoring Status. Once I press Enter, it's going to iterate over all of the websites that I have hosted in Internet Information Services and show me the list of which applications are currently being monitored. We can see I have my Fabricam Fiber app and my Tailspin Toys app are currently being monitored. I've heard that some customers are experiencing some difficulties with the Tailspin Toys app. Let's go and take a, a look at what they're finding. So I click the Checkout button and some of my customers in California are saying that they're seeing really slow performance. So I've clicked the Review Order button, and I can see from myself that this is indeed taking a very long time. Okay, well let's go back. Some of our other customers in the state of Kentucky have been saying they're just getting an error message. I'm going to try that one out as well, and I can see they are indeed getting an error message. So I'm going to close my browser. I'm going to go back to PowerShell. And what I want to do is I want to get a copy of the log that contains the detailed data that the Microsoft Monitoring Agent was collecting. So I'm going to use the Checkpoint command, and I'm going to say which application I want to gather the data for. And this is my Tailspin Toys application. When I do that, the data is gathered and output into an iTrace file. And you can see right here the name of the file and the location where the file was dropped. So let's go and take a look at that location. So you can see here's the file that was just created. There are a couple of other files that we've collected over time. Now one of the challenges that you always have when you need to diagnose a problem is inevitably you're in the middle of already doing some work. So I've been working on my Tailspin Toys app adding some enhancements for the next version when suddenly these problems come up that I need to address right away. So without touching the application as it is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to open 
that IntelliTrace file that we just collected. I'm just going to browse to that location where the file was dropped, or if you're working with an enterprise, maybe your operations team has sent you this file. So we can see the file, and it contains several incidents of a slow-performing web page in my performance violations. We can also see down in the exception data, I've got an exception with a missing tax rate. That'll probably be one that I'll want to investigate. Something else you'll notice up at the very, very top here is this message that says Visual Studio can find and open the solution that matches this log. So you'll go directly to the application code when you start debugging. Well, let's open that solution. You'll see now that this is automatically connecting to my Team Foundation server. Once that resolves, Team Foundation server will also know what version of the source code was used to collect the data. Okay, so we've now resolved against our Team Foundation server. You can see I could connect to a different collection if I wanted. It's already identified the solution that I want to open, the path, as well as the label for the version that was used when the application was built that got deployed. I'm going to merge this into my workstation, and you'll see that the current solution is going to be closed and it will automatically be shelved into a shelf set. So let's open up that version. You see I'm getting prompted to save the changes that I had in progress. I'm going to save those, and all of my changes were shelved. So I don't have to worry about the state of the application that I was working on versus the state that I need to deal with to fix my problem. So now that I'm back in my IntelliTrace summary, let's dig into one of these performance problems. So when I drill into one of these performance problems, we can see that this stored proc, the SQL statement, SP get tax rate, was causing some problems. I'm going to click on the find in tree, and that's going to expand out this tree down below that'll show me what led up to the problem that we encountered. Expanding out the properties on this stored procedure, we can also see that we've got the stored procedure name, the database that was connected to, as well as the server. We can look at the parameters. We can see that there were two, and we can drill down into each one of them, and I can see the value of the parameters that were passed into that stored procedure. I may want to investigate this SQL statement directly in, within my SQL Server, or I may want to investigate the code that called this. So I'm just going to double click on this line, and what we'll see is Visual Studio took me directly to the line of code that was called. This is all done because we found the matching source code from Team Foundation Server. We'll see how that was done in just a moment. Once I've gotten to the line of code, I can begin my investigation here. We can also see in the Locals window additional data that we saw in the IntelliTrace window, including the values of the parameters. Now that I've seen that and I can investigate it a little further, let's take a look at what was done to make the magic happen. In Team Explorer, you can see I've got my change set that was created when I opened up the debugging session. So all my previous changes are stored here. If we go back and take a look at my builds that were defined for TFS, you can see I have this Tailspin Toys build. We're going to take a look at some of the details here. So within TFS, we've got a build defined, and automatically information about the version will be included in your output. We've added one additional settings. So let's take a look at the process. And this is all just using the default template that comes out of the box. Under step two, which is build, we have the advanced step. And you can see some MS build arguments. I've added in this additional parameter of include server name in build info, and I've set it equal to true. What this does is it tells Team Foundation Server to include server information in my build output. Let's take a look and see what that means. So I'm going to go to my Drops folder, my Tailspin Toys, and we'll take a look at a drop that was created several days ago. In there, my published websites, my Tailspin web app, you can see the typical content that you'd expect to see for your web application with one additional file, this build info 
app.config file. This is a new feature introduced with Visual Studio 2013 and Team Foundation Server 2013. This file contains information that can be deployed with your application onto your servers. The Microsoft Monitoring Agent picks up this data and includes it in the IntelliTrace file. And that's what gives you the ability to open the matching solution. Let's take a look at what this file looks like. So it's a simple XML file that contains information about your application, the label that was used during the build, and a bunch of other interesting information like the version of the build, whether it was a debug or a retail build, as well as what solution was compiled. This information up near the top, TFS source control, is only provided if I provide that additional parameter. What you'll see is it contains the URL to my TFS server, as well as the project that was used as the primary compilation, as well as specific information about the version that was used when the application was compiled. With this information, Visual Studio can find the matching Team Foundation server, as well as the source code that was used when the build was compiled. Taking this information, we can get you back to the source code that was used for the running application, making debugging your application much easier than it ever was before. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you've seen today and get out there and start using the Microsoft Monitoring Agent.